Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first edition of The Voice Artist uh, Interviews and Podcasts in the Entertainment and Animation Industry. I'd like to welcome and thank our very special guest today, Franklin and Nia of BER and Frank and Nia and the Crooked Hearts, two wonderful bands. Um, go and check them out. Um, BER is a band, fictional band from the Teen Titans Go Cartoon Network series, and Frank and Nia and the Crooked Hearts is a real band <laughs> that um, you guys can go check out right now there's a link in the description below to frank's website um great music great guy um unfortunately we did not get the chance to um record a podcast completely together so he was kind enough to offer me um a recording of him answering some of the questions i asked him so i spliced together some things for us and i hope you all enjoy it very much thank you again mr ania uh you're a great guy and hopefully we'll get carl and billy on the show soon without further ado Question one. So, Frank, how did your music career begin? I would say that I really got interested in music when I got my first Rolling Stones album for Christmas many years ago, and something about the Stones that got me hooked on music and playing guitar and singing. And from there, I picked up the guitar at probably seven or eight years old, and then at around 15, 16, I started getting a lot better at it, and... I started to play with my brother Paul, who's also a musician, and we we had several bands together. And I ended up basically doing my own band, Frank and Ia Band, which turned into Frank and Ia and the Crooked Hearts, and that's what I'm currently doing. And uh, I'm also a member of a popular TV band from the show Teen Titans Go, and we had a hit song called The Night Begins to Shine. B stands for Burnett, and E stands for Ania, that's me, and uh, R stands for Regan. So Frank, um, just in general, it's one of my favorite songs, The Night Begins to Shine. I listen to it all the time, and I wanted to know, like, uh, what was the development behind it? How did you meet Carl and Billy? How was it written? When was it written? Uh, there's an interesting history behind that track, because I actually wrote the song in the mid-1980s. So that's why it has that 80s feel to it, um, and it, that was years before it aired on the show, obviously, and um, it was influenced by British Invasion and new wave bands of the 1980s, and primarily Duran Duran, their first album. So jumping ahead into the 2000s is uh, when I met Carl Burnett, who at the time was renting a room for me in my recording studio in Westchester County, New York. And uh, Carl is a writer and a, a wonderful producer for Telepictures which is basically a music company that provides music to uh, to Warner Brothers and shows that they're affiliated with. Yeah, so in uh, around 2005, Carl was asked to submit to Telepictures a handful of songs that were not related to that show, and uh, Carl kindly shared his workload with me and asked me if I had any material that sounded like a 1980s Duran Duran song. And voila! I certainly did, and um, I knew exactly which one to pull out of the can because that melody really stood out for me, and uh, I always remembered it. So I slapped the whole thing together for him and with the melody and the vocals and everything, and um, <laughs> and the rest of it is history. I, uh, I, I find it very interesting how it was written such a long time ago. It, it's a great talent, and of course YouTube wasn't uh, available back then in the 80s, but uh, I feel like in the right hands, you know, uploaded and monetized, that could have done very well. Uh, when did Billy get in on this? Yeah, so I put the music and vocals together for Carl, and once he got the track, he put his magical twist on it and handed it over to Billy to sing on it. And I believe they met a year or two before uh, Carl met me on the road, and he handed him a, a version of the song on the CD uh, and asked him if he could sing on it <laughs> and the uh, rest of it is history. So once Billy sang on the song it was a perfect match and it added a real sweet sweet element to the track and uh, was really the last missing link on that track and the uh, icing on the cake and it was really cool how that all came along and uh, this was around August of 2005. You know, I find it extremely fascinating about how sometimes some things work out the right way and uh, all at the hands of fate. Um, so what was the craziest thing about 
the song success, the the song in general, um, the the way it was perceived and executed throughout the last few years since its uh, debut on the Titans. To me, the the craziest thing about it is that the majority of it was written years and years before, and I didn't even have to refer to a cassette. I just remembered it and um, recut it. I, I find that very interesting. Um, it should have been discovered a long time ago. You're, you have such a great talent, I gotta say, though. Um, when was its Titan debut again? I remember uh, watching it. I think the day it did come out. Jumping to 2015, uh, The Night Begins to Shine first appeared in an episode called Slumber Party. And um, that's where it went haywire and people started looping it on YouTube. And at that point, it went kind of viral. And then the uh, producers decided to dedicate an entire episode to the song. And uh, that episode was called 404020. I'm a big fan of the show. And I've watched that episode a few times. Um, and I understand 40% goes to you, 40 to Carl, and 20 to Billy. Um, what exactly is the 404020 mean in all of this? 404020 is actually the royalty split between us three. Oh, okay. Now I get it. <laughs> well, um, anyway, jumping forward to last summer in August, um, I understand there was a four part special for Teen Titans Go That Begins to Shine where there was also two new debuted songs, which I also, I also happen to like very much. Um, can you explain a little bit about it? Uh, the four-part series aired in August of 2017, and that's when the song uh, hit number one uh, worldwide on uh, iTunes and number 23 on the Billboard Rock charts. And the other two tracks, Forever Mine and Rise Up, also charted. And uh, those two tracks also came together in a similar fashion. That must have been uh, an amazing achievement, a uh, great feeling when you top the charts in uh, the iTunes store. That That's amazing. And not only did you just top it with uh, Night Begins to Shine, but the other songs even made the list. And um, that, that's an amazing accomplishment. And, uh, congratulations to all of you. Um, the song was definitely great enough to top the charts, and it was definitely great enough to get a cover by... Uh, Two well-known faces in music, or five if you count uh, the band itself. Um, can you tell us about who did a cover on The Night Begins to Shine? The Night Begins to Shine was covered by uh, CeeLo Green and Fall Out Boy, and they did really, really awesome versions of the song. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And the way you, they used it in the show was amazing, and uh, I, I love their covers. Um, it can never match the original, but um, they definitely got two different feels to it and you could still feel the emotions and heart racing you get from the original and I think it's great that they still um, connected with the original song and grasp the concept of it now what is the future of BE oh, are you guys planning to go back in any new episodes is there anything else you can tell us about what's gonna go on in the future Yes, if we were asked to write more songs or participate in more shows, we would absolutely love to do that. And uh, you never know, there might be a spinoff from the show, and how cool would that be? I think that would be absolutely um, amazing for a show all about BER. A spinoff of that would be amazing. Um, something definitely new for the network. Big fanatic of cartoons, and um, I, I would watch that all the time. Um, we'll definitely see what the future brings with that. Um, and on the topic of BER being... Um, show and on the show itself um what was it like seeing yourselves as cartoons I, I think that was an unbelievable experience for all of us just to be part of the warner brothers family was a real honor for me because all my favorite cartoon characters were always the warner brother cartoon characters like bugs bunny i think that's absolutely amazing i'd love to be um in your shoes in that case because i'm such a big cartoon fanatic and um being on tea times go or any show um is absolutely an honor and uh, I'm glad you guys got that opportunity. Um, future of yourself, though, um, aside from the band, aside from cartoons and all, um, what's it looking for for the Crooked Hearts? As far as my music career goes, my main project and my baby for the last few years has been uh, Frank and Nia and the Crooked Hearts in which I am the lead singer, the guitarist, and the writer for. And uh, we just released our third album called Sunshine in My Head, 
I enjoy really working with my bandmates, Martin Stroh, Brian Newsholm, and Alex Vritzabitsky, which are really my good friends, and uh, we have a great time playing music. Okay, guys, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, Mr. Frank and Nia. Um, you guys heard it first from Frank. Um, go check him out. I'll leave the links in the description for BER Official and Frank and Nia and the Crooked Hearts. Got some great music on there. I've checked some of that out myself. Um, great guys, great music. Uh, I'm sure you all enjoy it. Look forward to the next podcast. Upcoming, we've got Johnny Lenanen from Impractical Jokers along with Rob Emmer from Impractical Jokers. And we've also got C.H. Greenblatt on the way. So please stay on a lookout. Um, like, comment, subscribe. And make sure you support Mr. Inia. He's a great guy. Um, thank you so much again for being on the show. Really appreciate it. And maybe we'll get to do a little bit more in the future. Um, thank you again, Frank. Thank you, uh, everyone, um, for listening. Like, comment, subscribe once more. And be sure to check out my other channels in the link description below. Thank you again. Goodbye.